Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. A couple of days ago, we had a small patch for Age of Empires 4, hotfixing the Mongol Town Center exploit, and a couple of other improvements. But it left a lot of people, including me, somewhat disappointed and confused about how much support AOE 4 would be getting in the future. Maybe partly because that was the general reaction, we now have a roadmap released just two days later. It outlines generally when AOE 4 players can expect various additions to the game, and I think this is a great move, as it shows they're both listening to feedback and do plan to give the game a lot of support moving forward. The roadmap really includes plans for two major updates and the different things they'll be putting in each. First off, there's going to be a Winter 2021 update, which if we're being extremely technical should come sometime between December 21st and December 31st, though I'm sure they'll just release it whenever it's ready. Even on Monday, I expected they were working on something much bigger behind the scenes, and it at least sounds like this is coming by the end of the year, featuring hundreds of balance changes and bug fixes. They highlight a few notable changes that they'll be making and actually show a bit of a course correction on some features people have been asking for, which in previous interviews they seem reluctant to commit to. For instance, in the next patch, players will be able to turn on in-game scores in custom games, though it feels implied that ranked and quick play won't have visible scores and probably never will. Despite score being included in previous Age of Empires games, the AOE 4 devs' idea is that they don't want players to have extra information from sources other than scouting. Different games have different approaches to score, and this is at least a symbolic compromise. The next change they list is they'll be moving the Chinese Dynasty button out of the middle of the screen and putting it in the corner. This is one of those changes I don't think you could find a single person it upsets. It's an aggressive button that's very easy to misclick in the heat of a game and even shows up when you're spectating if player 1 is Chinese. This and Imperial officials being attached to the Idle Villager button are probably the two biggest turnoffs to playing China, which is otherwise a very fun civilization. Another change is we'll be able to view the map after the game has ended. It really makes the post game much more satisfying to find your opponent's sneaky base in the corner of the map or see that you really should have held on a bit longer because they didn't have much of an economy. Stuff like that can give great immediate feedback. Again, this is going to be a popular change and was widely requested. Next, there's going to be improvements to the readability of the minimap. They plan to adjust the color of certain resources while also making wonders and the primary town center larger so you can find them at a glance. As long as they're tweaking it to find the right balance between information and clutter, that's really all we can ask for. In addition to those changes, they also list some of their extensive balance and bug priorities. The changes include a badly needed nerf to the French Hulk ship in Feudal Age, a buff to crosswomen and spearmen against cavalry, though I think knights specifically are the issue, especially French knights. They also mentioned reducing the cost of the Chinese repeater crossbow, fixing the Holy Roman Empire prelate, which at the moment can spontaneously stop working, fixing the Mongol superior mobility modifier, and of course the Rus infinite relic duplication. That list essentially lines up with what I think the biggest issues are as well, which I think reflects that they are listening to player feedback. Personally, I think some of these are large enough issues that it would be nice to see them hotfixed as soon as possible and not wait for the full winter patch, especially the Rus relic glitch and French Hulk. That's all just in the winter patch though, which is probably coming out before the end of the year. They then outline the spring 2022 patch, which depending on how literal we want to be about the term spring, means sometime before June 21st, though I imagine they're aiming for quite a bit sooner. It's at this point that we'll get a lot of new features added to the game. For example, they list user-generated content tools, which I read as a scenario editor and a modding system. The spring patch is also when we'll get ranked seasons. Each season is going to be 12 weeks long, and essentially you climb the ladder each time, with some in-game rewards based on performance. Technically, we sort of already have ranked, as your elo is tracked in quick play to give better matchmaking, but this would be a more formal rank system. They also mention adding patrol, and give a list of some other features they want to include. For example, they mention a global build queue and better unit stat cards. I'm also glad to see that they list hotkeys, including a mention of an alternative to the grid system, which frankly I would have put as a higher priority than almost anything else mentioned. For people who like the grid system, I'm sure you'll still have that as an option, but the game sorely needs a hotkey system closer to previous Age of Empires games, as well as the ability to map commands to your extra mouse buttons. They also mention taunts and cheat codes, which always add a bit of fun to the game, as well as AI difficulty adjustments, extending both the high and low end of difficulty to create a wider range. And finally, they also mention waypoint indicators, which again is a very common request given you currently have no feedback when laying waypoints in the fog of war. I'm a little surprised they didn't mention picking your own color, an option to choose a random civilization, or map bands, as those seem like they would be big crowd pleasers. That's not to say they won't include those things, but I think they're popular enough to mention. 
Overall, I think the reaction to the hotfix last Monday would have been much more positive if this had come out at the same time. But either way, it's nice to get a bit of a look at their priorities now, and how many of those align with the most popular requests. Not mentioned, but I'm sure is going on behind the scenes of all this is work on a DLC as well. I don't have any inside information, but you can't change my mind that Byzantines are definitely going to be included in that. I wouldn't expect any DLC until summer at the earliest though, as it seems they realize core game features need to come first. So overall, I have to say I'm feeling much more optimistic about AoE 4 in the long run than I was a couple of days ago. I'm curious to hear what you guys think though, and if this hits your personal list of improvements that you'd love to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.